Welcome to the audio engineering recording for week seven. And you can see that week seven is May 13th through 19th. And before we move on with this, just a couple of notes. There are essentially three weeks left. There's week seven, week eight, week nine. And then the last week, there are just a couple of days. So we're getting down to the end. So you really need to get busy catching up on your work. In week seven, we're going to start section four, which is about microphones and recording. And you're going to do part of it in week seven and then the rest of it in week eight. So you can see that in week seven. And what I suggest is that you can um, go through the first three lessons. And then Thursday, you can go for, through the next three lessons. And then, of course, do the study questions. And you'll do the Class Connect write-up. And then in week eight, you'll finish up with the section four work. You can do it again however you want to do it. But since there's not a lot of work this week, it might be good to get some old work caught up uh, also. So let's move on down to Section 4. And Section 4 is about um, using microphones and doing recordings. So we'll go right here to the write-up first. So what does a transdu transducer do? What is the purpose of the pop shield on a microphone? So here we are in lesson four. We're going to learn about microphone hardware, different types of microphones, microphone placement, copyright law, and sample sampling. So that's all of what the section four unit is about. Okay, lesson one, microphone hardware. So microphone obviously is a device for picking up sound, and microphones are the opposite of speakers. The speaker converts electric sound to sound waves. Microphone converts sound waves to electricity. So you can see information you know, when it was record, when it was invented, and many different devices that use microphones. Now, transducer is an important part of a microphone, and transducer changes forms of energy from one form to another. But the way that it really works in microphones and speakers is that they change energy back and forth between sound waves and electrical signals. So that's what a transducer does for a microphone. Different types of transducers. Now I, I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm not going to waste or spend your time doing that. But go through each of these because some of the study questions, not the Class Connect write-up, but some of the study questions talk about these different types of transducers. So I'm just going to go to the last one, and then that lets me move ahead to the next slide section. So here's the practice activity. You've seen lots of those, so go through that, see what you know. And different parts of microphone. So you want to read through all these different parts of microphones. I'm just going to, since there's a Class Connect question about pop shield, I'm going to uh, go to that so you can see what a pop shield does. You can see, see the answer there. Then I'm just going to go to the last one, output. That way I can move on with this. But of course, you want to look at all of those because your study questions are going to be related to those. Okay, the practice. So do that drag and drop, see how see what you know. Different connections on microphones, RCA connection, USB, Cat5, fiber optics, some of those things you might know about. So go through each of those, learn a little bit about what they are. I'm just going to the end to adapters again so I can move on to the next slide. You need to pay attention to all those things. Active and passive mics. So active mics need an external power source. And then passive mics, they don't need external. They just they just take the sound and it goes right into the, the machine. Like the microphone I'm using to record this, it's just part of the it's the microphone in my laptop. So I would consider that probably a passive since it doesn't have any external energy, external power. Phantom uh, power, electrical current sent to a condenser microphone through its connector cable. So you can you know, learn a little bit about the different types of microphones and, and what types of power they use. So here's what we learned in, in lesson one. Different kinds of microphones, parts of microphone, different connector types, active passive mics, and phantom power. 
in lesson two. So let's go back to the write-up. So we answered these questions in, in lesson one, so now lesson two. The difference between omnidirectional and unidirectional. When purchasing a microphone, what do audio engineers pay attention to? So microphone specifications, of course, those are the specs or the specific information about a microphone. You know, how much sound is it picked up, what type of microphone it is, etc. And microphones have different directional responses. And what that is is how sensitive it is to sound coming from different directions. You can see over here there's omnidirectional, bidirectional, unidirectional. So you want to make sure you read through each of these, understand what they are, because you're going to compare in the Class Connect write-up omnidirectional with unidirectional. And you can see the picture here, can't you? There's unidirectional, sound comes from one direction. Bidirectional comes from two directions. And omnidirectional, obviously, from all directions. So do the practice activity. Frequency response. You've learned about frequency and some of the stuff you've done, haven't you? So if I click here, there's my frequency response. So that's a higher sound. So you've learned about some of these things in previous activities. So certain microphones pick up certain sounds better than others. A frequency response curve. So this is information you can see, like if you look at the box of the microphone you're buying or the, the specifications for it, it'll give you this graph that'll show you the frequency response. And when audio engineers go to buy microphones, they have two things to pay attention to, the frequency response chart and the high pass filter frequency. Those are the two things that are important to audio engineers. Proximity effect, as we click, and then they're moving away from the microphone, so it gets quieter as they're, they're moving along. So the closer the microphone is to the audio source, the larger the base is. So you can see different things about microphone placement that are important. Of course, word proximity means closeness. Transient response is how quickly the microphone reacts. The diaphragm that moves in a microphone, how quickly it reacts. So obviously, you want to have um, a fast-acting microphone. It says down here, microphones with slow reaction time, slow response, have less accurate sound. <clears throat> Different output characteristics. So you want to go through each of those. I'm just going to hit the, the bottom one. So then I can move on to the next slide, but you want to make sure you look at each of those because you'll have some study questions about them. The practice activity, give that a shot. Different mics for different sounds, whether it's going to be a microphone to hear somebody playing a guitar or a microphone to listen to the lead singer for a band. So in this section, we looked at microphone specs, directional responses, omnidirectional, unidirectional, frequency response, proximity, transient, and different output characteristics. So that's all about microphones, the specifications of microphones. Okay, lesson three. So let's go on to the write-up. So for lesson two, we talked about these two things. So lesson three, when stereo sound is recorded in left to right channels, what effect does it give? How is a preamp useful? Okay, so in lesson three, we're going to look at <clears throat> microphone placement. So you want to make sure you read through each of these, learn about microphone placement. And I'm just going to go to the last one so that I can move on. So learn about microphone placement and the importance of that. Practice activity as usual. Choosing the right type of microphone is really important. I mean, some like this tag says cost you know, are expensive with the dollars. Some, this shows the cents, like they're less expensive. So, you know, really, you want to get the best microphone for your money. This microphone makes all the difference in the sound, obviously. And there's, you know, two types of sound recordings. There's mono, which is just one sound wave on a single channel, and then stereo that has two channels. So when you think about doing this, most of the things that, that you guys are used to is stereo sound, 
In stereo, the way that that's done is that you have, uh, when it runs, you have a right channel and a left channel that record at different times from different sides, and that gives you the illusion that the sound is coming from different directions when you hear it. So that's when you're listening to stereo music, like in your car, and you hear like the drums coming from one direction and the guitar coming from another. Well, that's how stereo happens. The left and right channels record separately. Okay, now um, miking for stereo sound. So how do you use mics to get the stereo sound? And there are three diff four different ways, so you want to go through all of those, read what they are. I'm just going to the last one so I can move forward, but read what those those different ways are that you can record for stereo. Practice activity, go through that, please. Now, mic placement for instruments, of course, that's another thing that's really important. For an acoustical guitar, you'll want to put the microphone much closer. The electric guitar, <coughs> excuse me, you're, of course, going to be plugged in, or you have it you know, in front of the speaker, whereas acoustical, you have it right in front of the guitar. So, you know, there's some different things you want to think about on these um, when you go through them, drums, of course, might have placement at the top so it can record a couple of different placements on the drums. And obviously lead vocals, then it's going to be you know, right in front of the person. Practice activity. A preamp. A preamp, it boosts the amplitude of microphone's audio signal to line level, meaning the minimum strength for it to be recorded. So preamp is important. This is a, a microphone in itself might not be strong enough or might not be able to pick up all the sounds. So the preamp can really help. Direct input boxes. This would be where this would be connected to the DAW. You learned about that, right? That software that can they can use for recording. So this one you plug directly to the box, then the blocks would plug into that your computer and run the software. So in lesson three, general specific microphone placement, mono and stereo, different ways of miking for stereo and preamps and um, direct input boxes. Okay, lesson four. So let's go to the write up. In lesson three, we did answer these three. Good. Lesson four, some examples of the types of intellectual property that copyright applies applies to give an example of fair use. So now we're getting into copyright and using other people's music. So that's what you're going to do in lesson five and six. You're going to do some mixing with other people's music. So intellectual property is something that's created from the mind. So it could be an artwork, it could be um, music, all types of things. So intellectual property is inventions, company names, logos, all of that. Now we're not, I haven't talked about copyright yet. We're just talking about intellectual property, meaning things that somebody created from their own thoughts, their own mind. And there are different categories of it. Now we talk about copyright. Copyright was somebody has the exclusive right to publish, sell, or make money off of that, um, that piece of work. Now, copyright applies to certain types of intellectual property, so you can see that. Copyright doesn't cover inventions and things. Those are covered by patents. So copyright covers those specific things. And I need to go back to the write-up and see what our question was. Some examples of type of intellectual property that copyright applies to. Okay. So the, here are some examples. So anything that you draw or a story you write or a song that you make or even looks like this, characters and cartoons, those are your rights. Nobody else can use those without your permission. And you see a lot more about copyright here. Copyright works only until 70 years after the creator has died. Okay, so that's a little bit about copyright. And do the practice activity as usual. Oops, I'm going to skip that. Now, digital rights management is, as this says, software added to digital content like music or movies to prevent 
copying. So and you know they have some DVDs that you can't copy, and certainly you're not supposed to copy any DVDs that don't belong to you. So music you buy that come on a DVD or movies, you're not supposed to copy those to give those to anybody. Because when you copy something and give it to someone else, you're taking money away from the person who originally created it. Because they make money off of every CD they sell or every every movie they sell. So if you take that copy and give it to somebody, you're taking away their right to make money, that person's right to make money. Now you can use some samples, short clips of music, but you need to get permission. I mean, permission you can use, if somebody gives you permission to use their whole song, you can use their whole song. But in general, there's something called fair use, which means you can get a certain right without permission. And there are different uh, requirements. If the owner gives permission, then obviously that's fair use. Follow conditions that they've given. Give credit to the copyright owner. Use the work for educational purposes, not for profit. You only use a small part of the work. Make sure you, you won't hurt the original work's value. Now here's some examples of fair use, like for you as a student. If you use 10 seconds of your favorite song in a presentation, or you quote a writer or something like that, those are a couple of fair uses. So in those cases, you could use that without having to get permission. But if ever you're in doubt, then you want to make sure you get permission to use somebody's materials. There's some practice, so go through that. Public domain. Public domain means intellectual property that is available for anyone to use for any purpose, essentially. So you can see right here, in the United States, any work created before 1900 is public domain. So there are people that actually go through and they can find a book that was written like in 1880 or 1890, and they can republish that book as if it's their own. So it's really uh, an interesting thing. I um, mean, they wouldn't republish it uh, with their name like they wrote it, but they could republish it with the author's name and things like that. So public domain is really a big thing. And, and that just this just relates to public domain as far as age, but there are other things in public domain, like something created by the government is public domain. Um, and there are other, other things that are considered public domain. So there are many different licenses for use of of uh, somebody else's intellectual property. So you can go ahead and look at those different licenses. I'm just going to skip to the last one so I can move ahead. Some other Creative Commons licenses, so they're breaking them down a little bit. So you want to go through each of those so you kind of un better understand a little bit more about licensing. Practice activity, so go through that. Now finding samples, so this is this website, ccmixer.org, they give you some samples of music. You might want to pay attention to that. I think you have to use it a little bit later in, uh, in lesson five or six. Giving credit. Always give credit if you're using something that somebody else has created. So when, when you use someone else's music in your own work, it's important to give credit. And that is calling attribution or attributing right if you attribute to somebody else that means you're giving them credit for something so the some of the information um, where you got the got it the website you got it from things like that so in summary we looked at intellectual rights copyright management or digital rights management fair use public domain types of licenses okay, that's lesson four let's go back to the write-up so lesson four, we did those, and lesson five, what is mixing? Did you download and unzip the section four resources? So, so let's go into lesson five. And in lesson five, this is where we're going to start doing the physical work, right? The work on your computer. This is like all the units in this class. They introduce you thing in a couple of lessons, then you do some work later on. You're going to do some mixing here. And mixing is where you take sounds and tracks from different sources, then combine them into a new sound. So that's what you're going to be doing in this lesson. Doing some mixing. And the way that they have you do that, remember we downloaded course resources back in the um, original, um, in the course overview? 
presentation. You recorded some, you downloaded some resources. Here you're going to download some more resources. So the way you do it, I'll just show you with Internet Explorer. I'll click here. And then I'll scroll down a little bit. Then I'll click here and download the resources. And when I download them, what I'll, I'll show you here, let me see if I can find it. Uh, let me go to my desktop. Audio engineering. So here's my section four resources. So you'll download that and then unzip it and you end up with all these tracks of sound. So I have that in my audio folder. Say I'm in my auto engineering folder and I have a folder called section four resources. And of course that just happens when I unzipped my section 4. So here's my section 4 zip down here. Then I right click it and then I extract all. So I'm unzipping I'm unzipping what I download right here. So you'll go through section 5 so you'll unzip and then you'll have all those resources and they're going to talk about sound files importing them in Audacity listening to the tracks so you're gonna go through and do this work you're gonna save the project do it just like they tell you to save the project then you're gonna remove some tracks have you go look at some alternative sounds how to repeat samples you practice some of these things before using stereo and mono you can see stereo mono you're gonna do some settings on that more repeat samples that you'll work with. Time shift, you've done time shift before. So you can see they having you go through all that work and you save that and that's going to be part of what you'll submit. So um, lesson five is all about getting a lot of that work done. Now lesson six, you're going to go ahead and do some more sampling, some mixing. So in lesson six, you follow those directions, open a file, you're going to look at gain, increase or decrease the amplitude. So you're going to do some, <clears throat> some work with other features of audio engineering. So you're going to change the gain of the sounds. Pan lets you make a track sound louder in the right or left headphone. So this is going to be creating stereo, isn't it? So you can see down here, left and right, how you're going to do that. So you're really getting into creating your own sound in what you're doing in this work. So you're going to pan the track splitting stereo. So you're going to have different tracks splitting the stereo. So go through all these steps. So you're making mono from stereo and making stereo from mono. The envelope and uh, um, Audacity if you have you take a look at that as it, it helps you look at the ampl amplitude of a song over time as the song plays the envelope tool so you practice with that a little bit so you do all that check your work export as an mp3 so you're going to do all that work and then, um, of course, the last thing for the Class Connect is we have the Career Connection, and you've seen those in the Class Connect write-ups before. So again, in this, you're going to do in Lesson 5 and 6, you're going to do, do some practice work, and then you're going to do the write-up. Then for next week, for Week 8, you'll go in and you have the, the um, Assignment 4 and Assignment 4B. Now, you can do those anywhere you want. But next week in week eight, when you do assignment 4B, of course, that's where you turn in sound files. As always, you'll want to go all the way down to the bottom and make sure that you've done all the work to turn in the files that they say. But for this week, for week seven, you're only required to do the Class Connect write-up through all the different sections, the different lessons, and do the study questions for this week. Then in week eight, you'll do the other activities in section four. So I look forward to your work coming in. If you're behind, if you're less than 50% in the class right now, I suggest you get some stuff caught up.
if you need to if you're over 50 percent right now then you're sitting pretty good to be able to pass the class of course you need to do more work but at least you'll be won't be too far behind so thanks for watching and i look forward to work coming in bye